It happens to all of us. We're in that shower and it never gets hot. There's something wrong with our hot tank and now we have to deal with it. This video is repairing your electric hot water tank. Hot water tanks fail because a component fails and the most common component to fail is the element. Some old timers call an element a kale rod, but basically it's just the heating element that creates the heat in the water due to electricity going through the element. Now I will say with a disclaimer that this project is not for DIYers who don't understand circuits or how to use electrical testing tools. You'll be working with wires that carry high voltage. If you don't feel comfortable working with that, well then don't and call a plumber. But if you've done your own electrical before, as well as plumbing, this video is going to help you get that element out of there and possibly save you six to seven hundred dollars in repair on your hot tank. Let's talk about the tools and parts needed for this project. First thing you're going to need is a multimeter and that's going to allow you to measure your AC voltage to make sure you're safe and also your resistance otherwise known as ohms. Next thing on the list is a garden hose. You're going to have to turn off the power and drain that hot tank completely empty before we get started. The next thing we're going to need on the list is screwdrivers. You're going to need a flathead and you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. Next on the list is a woodworking impact driver. And that impact driver is going to have a power rating of 1500 inch pounds. Now, don't confuse this with an impact driver that would be used for automotive work. The impact driver I'm talking about, and the one that I like, is made by DeWalt. And the good one has three speed settings on it. And it's rated for about 1,800 inch-pounds, which is a little bit better than some of those DeWalt's that come in bundles that don't have a three-speed setting at all. The reason I don't want you to get the automotive kind is, is they're way too powerful. You're going to destroy that nut. And while we're talking about it, uh, the reason we're going to use an impact driver is because I don't want you to get a cheap socket. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. The uh, next thing on our list is a um, half inch drive adapter. And that's going to allow you to put sockets on your impact driver. And the socket we're going to have to get for this project to do it right is an inch and a half six point impact socket. Now, the, the key here is six point. If you buy an inch and a half socket that's 12 point, it's not going to do a good enough job for you. It may actually um, cause the nut to strip out because these nuts on the heating elements are soft metal. So it's important that we get a six point and an impact socket is always a, a six point. So here's a picture of that cheap socket for removing the elements they have in the box stores. And this is uh, not what you want for the job. They tell you to buy this and put a screwdriver in it. Well, you might get that top element out, but those bottom elements are surrounded by a, a, a lot of debris in the tank. And the chance for the threads on the element rusting on the bottom element are a lot greater. And you're just not going to have enough power with a screwdriver to remove that element with that cheap wrench. So I wouldn't even think about that. And keep in mind, any tools we're buying here, you know, you can, you can use down the road. Uh, if you don't want to spend the money for that DeWalt impact driver, well, I'm sure you've got a woodworking buddy who's got a woodworking impact driver. And if you do buy it, you're going to use it for all sorts of projects. Impact drivers are a key tool needed for putting in deck screws. So uh, don't sweat it. It's one of the benefits of being a DIYer. You end up with some extra tools and you're still saving money. So uh, skip that cheap element wrench if somebody suggests it at the box store. And the next thing on our list is the water elements. You're going to want to look at one of your old elements and it'll have a rating on there. 
uh, as far as the wattage. Here's a picture here that, that shows one of the elements I worked on that shows that it's a uh, 240 volt and it's um, 4,500 watts. So make sure you uh, match that element rating to the old one that was in there. That's super important. You don't want to put an overrated element in there. And the last item on here is a 18 inch breaker bar for uh, half inch sockets. Now, after you get that, um, that nut loosened uh, with that impact driver, and by the way, when you use your impact driver, you're gonna want it on the most powerful setting, the three setting if you have the DeWalt. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set it for Titan mode. The reason I tell you to set that impact driver on Titan is you know it's going to go in a little bit because there's no rust on the dry side of the tank. So attempt to tighten the nut and then loosen it, then tighten again, then loosen it. It should only take you two or three times before that nut becomes loose. Now, if it's got tons of rust on there, it's going to be a little easier to have this breaker bar to back it out the rest of the way, but don't attempt to use your breaker bar at first. You could damage your nut, and then you're going to be in a tough situation. And speaking of tough situations, the last thing you want to do is perform this on a Sunday or after hours when stores are closed. You know, you always have to be prepared for a plan B. If something goes disastrously wrong with your repair, you want to be able to call a plumber and get them in there to repair this thing. So uh, if at all possible, do it on a weekday. If you're working during the week, well, start it early in the morning so you've got plenty of time to go to the store to get any parts and plenty of time to contact a plumber if you get in the weeds a little bit. All right, it's time to start working on this hot tank. Before we do that though, we want to make sure we're familiar with our multimeter and we know how to check voltage on a water heater. I'm going to give you two great links. One is for checking that voltage and the other one is for testing the water heater element with your multimeter. You'll find those in the information section and you'll also see them pop up on the screen here shortly. So let's get started after you've reviewed that information. Here's some diagrams to help you familiarize yourself with where you're going to be testing and how these thermostats work with each other. The first diagram here shows you that L1 and L3 are the terminals where you're going to be testing for your 220 power. The second diagram shows you the upper thermostat and the upper element. Always remember that the upper thermostat has total priority over the lower. The lower will not kick on until the upper has done its job. And the reason that's important is, is if you have a bad upper element, the lower element will never go on. The circuit's broken, it just won't work. So that's, uh, that's important. And then once the upper element has reached its temp, this last diagram shows you that the power is switched by the upper thermostat to the lower thermostat and it starts its process. They both have temp settings on them and check that when you open this up. Make sure they're set at 125. 140 is too hot if they set it at that from the factory and you don't want scalding. And once that upper is done heating, it heats the lower and then the cycle goes back and forth until the hot tank is happy. I thought it would be a good idea for you to have a better idea how these thermostats work together. The other thing I want to mention too is you have a reset button on the upper thermostat. Before you even start work, what you want to do is get the power off, pull that upper uh, access plate, get the insulation off, and push the reset button. Then go back, turn your power on, and wait a little bit, uh, at least 30 minutes, to see if your hot water is working. It could be just a temporary problem where that upper thermostat reset kicked off. Chances are it won't fix it, but it's always worth a try. And uh, if it does, you're done. Just make sure you turn that power off before you button up that upper access panel.
Now, I've got an older meter, and that's one of the big reasons I wanted to refer you guys to those two videos on how to test for voltage and also how to test an element that's bad. I don't want you using my reference with my old meter because I'm sure yours is probably digital, so make sure you review those two videos before you get started. But I just wanted to show you a resistance check and how I determined that my upper element was bad. Let me show you what I mean about testing these. Uh, I've got my meter set on ohms, okay? And uh, this is an old fashioned one, some are uh, digital. But all you're gonna do is set that on ohms, and then we're gonna touch our probes to the two screws. You know, take your wires off, you're, uh, you're hot and you're cold. And uh, let's go ahead and put our uh, probes on each screw. And when we do that, watch our meter and you're gonna see that we've got some resistance, which is good. Okay, now let's go to the top one and do the same thing. And we'll, we'll touch our probes to our screws. And we look at our meter and we've got zip. So what that means is it overheated, and when we take it out, we'll probably see some physical damage on it. But, uh, you know, if you've got no resistance at all, uh, no continuity, that means we've got a bad kale rod element, and we need to put a new one in. Let's get ready to drain that tank. First thing we have to do is go over to the breaker box and turn off the breaker for the hot water tank. This particular house has a well. We're going to turn that well pump off too. And then we're going to hang a sign on this breaker box for no one to turn on or off any breakers while we're performing the work. All right, we connected our garden hose, ran it all the way outside. Try to get it going downhill, you'll get better draining. And then usually it's going to connect right to this valve. Uh, this, you can tell this is a newer valve because what we do on the newer ones is we just use a a flathead screwdriver and turn it counterclockwise a quarter of a turn. Yours might have a, a some type of a spigot handle on it you have to open up, but this homeowner uh, drains the water quite often, so they had a, a little different setup here with a couple extra shutoffs. Uh, but uh, usually you won't see all these extra shutoffs on here. All you're going to see is a, a spigot and uh, possibly a a screwdriver hopefully to turn that quarter turn and uh, let's go ahead and uh, make sure our well pump is off let's go upstairs and turn on some of the hot and cold valves and that'll vent this thing properly and it'll drain quicker and then we can uh, open up this valve a quarter turn and uh, start draining this thing out all right we're dealing with a, a 40 gallon tank so we'll time this it's uh, 12 43 in the afternoon and We'll see how long it takes to empty this tank out. Okay, it took 38 minutes to empty that tank. Now, your mileage may vary. Sometimes there's a lot of sediment on the bottom of these tanks, and it could uh, uh, obstruct the uh, spigot at the bottom. But in our case, it was 38 minutes. Let's see if we can determine, after loosening that, if there's any damage. Uh, yeah, I'm not a rocket scientist, but uh, I would say that considering that this is supposed to look like this, I, I'd say we got some real problems. You know, and I bought that extra, uh, extra element. I think I'm gonna pull the bottom one because I got a funny feeling there's a ton of corrosion on that one. We're going to give this tank a, a fresh start, so let's go ahead and pull the bottom one too. That bottom element didn't budge. I put the socket on the breaker bar and gave it a nudge, and it wasn't going anywhere. So instead of rounding the nut, I took it off and put it on our impact driver solution. And here's the real answer right here. We got an impact socket, which is six point. And what's key here is... It, I've got it attached to a good um, DeWalt 
impact driver. You know, you can always tell the difference between the cheap ones and the good ones. The cheap ones don't have the controls one through three. You know, it's just no choice at all. So we put this on. I started out by putting it in Titan mode. I hit it, I hit reverse, I hit Titan, I hit reverse, and it came out like a dream. Now, uh, I have a, uh, a breaker bar if I needed that, okay, but I really didn't. I, uh, what I did was is I just used the breaker bar to take it up by hand took the socket off, but that, that was the answer right there. If, if you don't have those tools, you may find yourself in a bad situation. You know, the, the socket was $16 worth every penny. Uh, and both elements are done. They're both done, so I feel better about it. Once you get that out, you put your elements back in. Make sure they're good and tight. You don't want any leaks. Put your wires in. Don't over-tighten to the point where you're going to break the terminal. But make sure they're, they're decent tight. And uh, then put your clips back in, your protective uh, clips for electric shock. Put your uh, insulation back in, and that'll keep it more efficient. Uh, put your covers back on, and you're good to go. You know, now it's just a matter of putting on your pump and waiting for uh, someone upstairs to tell you that water's coming out the cold side. Have them shut those off, and then go ahead and turn on the hot side. Now, that's going to take a lot longer. It's a 40-gallon tank. Once you get the air out of that, now and only now are you ready to put your a hot tank on and turn the power on. And, you know, if you follow that mantra, you'll never have another blown element due to human error, just uh, old age. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the Pompano Brownie channel. And that's going to do it for this video.